So, what do you do when your car does that? The other night, my son gave me a call. His 2005 Buick LaCrosse uh, wouldn't start. That was about the best he could get out of it. And it had been running great. He brought it home one night, parked it in the driveway, and uh, it was down near zero Fahrenheit. We had a really good cold snap here. And in the morning, it wouldn't start. And so he, he sent me that. Uh, that's about the best he could get out of it. So how did we approach this? I got a scan tool. Well, I should say, I have my Actron scan tool. But my son borrowed a Matco tool from a friend of his. And it was pretty nice because it's a, like a tablet. It's got a big screen on it. And that enabled us to record and, and plot data. Uh, we put a battery charger on the car because when you turn on the ignition and, and you let it, um, let it sit while you're trying to do diagnostics, you put the engine not running or repeated cranking, whatever. Uh, so you want to keep the battery up. We did a code check and imagine that, no codes. Right, so the, the car came in running and it stopped and it wouldn't start. Uh, it, you know, OBD hadn't picked up anything yet. So we started with uh, turn the key on and, and review the data, read the sensors, read the, you know, read all the data parameters and see if things look normal or if you can see something odd. And I'll say, you know, we started with, gee, did the um, were the coolant temperature sensors close? And they were. They were within a couple of degrees, for example, right? Um, the MAP sensor read atmospheric pressure, which it ought to do if the engine's sitting there. The, um, the mass airflow sensor was reading zero because it wasn't flowing any air. Uh, voltages were right. So, so all the channels made sense with the engine not running. So then I went and cranked it and ran it up. And I was able to get it to start by putting my foot in it pretty hard. And we turned the tool on to record data. And so it was recording while I cranked and started and then afterwards and we stored that data and plotted it, and I'll show that to you in a moment. Because then what you want to do is see what, if you can see what's normal or abnormal, and if any data channels are, say, not responding. So this is what the Matco Tools uh, data stream, this is what we chose to plot. I mean, there were, it, it would plot all the, it, it was a tool that had a GM module in it, so uh, you could get 200 channels of data if you wanted to, but most of them weren't important to why did the engine not start. So this car, just to be clear, this is a 3800 Series 3, which is a little different. Many people are familiar with the Series 2 engines. When they went to Series 3, this engine, for example, uh, some of the things you might go look for, it doesn't have a fuel pressure regulator. There's no fuel pressure return. It's, it's returnless. Uh, it has a mass airflow sensor, and it has a MAP sensor, and it's electronic throttle control, so there's no IAC. The throttle plate is controlled by the computer. Um, other than that, EGR, standard linear EGR, and um, you know, from the outside it looks like a kind of, it's a conventional 3800 General Motors engine. So anyway, uh, I was able to, with some throttle manipulation, I was able to get the car started and run it for maybe 20-30 seconds. You, you know, we can pick that out of the charts. Um, I had to put, you know, 25, I put a lot of throttle into it just to try to keep it running. Got it up around 2,000 RPM max, uh, and then the engine stalled on me. And during the time it was running, I mean, it was punching out black smoke, it was uh, the clouds of black out the back were really bad. It was really, and you could smell it, it was really rich. Uh, my son said he thought he, there was a puddle of gas on the ground behind the car. And I think we probably just plain followed the plugs up was why it stalled. But you, you can see all the channels responded here. So here's, uh, I'm just going to walk through them. Uh, you know, we brought, then we brought the data in and went through it on playback. And you can see I was running almost 25% throttle. This is the pedal, electronic throttle control. So this is me and the pedal. Here's throttle position. It's a little above 20%. And in fact, it started um, on its own without me giving it throttle input. It started at 20% throttle to give it air to, to start at that temperature. And then you can see where it cut off and dropped off. 
about right in here. There was engine speed, so I got about 1800, 1900 before it cut itself off. I was hoping that getting enough throttle in it would get enough airflow through it that it would straighten something out and maybe give me a code. It didn't. Then there's mass airflow, and again, once it started to move, I got a nice air mass airflow reading, about 18 grams or so. Um, I don't know if that was right for that engine condition, but it seemed, mm, it seemed like it was in the ballpark. Then we got to the map sensor, and this one was kind of interesting because um, look at that nice straight line. In other words, it's sitting at 14.64, continuous, without a wiggle, all the way through. Now that's kind of odd. If I go back to the um, if I go back to the data stream list, the, the rest of the channels I plotted, uh, here's one for um, air fuel ratio, and it started at you know about six to one, which probably for a really cold weather cold start is right, and then it popped up, but you know it it settled at about eleven to one, which seems like it's incredibly rich. I mean, again, on a cold start at ten or fifteen above. It'll be rich, but, you know, I would have said 13-ish, 12, 13, maybe. But 11, th this is not what we got. This is what the system was commanding. I'm like, man, why is it commanding that rich? Um, injector pulse width was pretty high, and it was trying to hold that air-fuel ratio, so it did cut the pulse width back, and eventually cut the pulse width back to zero. Uh, spark looked pretty good. But I'll go back to these two here. Um, manifold absolute pressure didn't even wiggle. So I get the engine up to 2,000 RPM, the throttle's moving back and forth, and it didn't even have a ripple. So after we looked at the scan tool data and saw that the map sensor wasn't, didn't seem like it was responding, it looked like it was reading full out atmospheric pressure all the time, we've just unplugged the cable to it so that it runs on a default value and let's see if she'll run not perfectly normal a little bit of roughness on the start, but boy, compared to where it was with, with the sensor hooked up, where it wouldn't start or wouldn't run at all, this is good. So, we unplugged the map sensor and gave it a try, as you can see, and we had great success. All of a sudden, the car was running great, it wasn't running rich, it wasn't perfect. But it was running. We elected to go ahead and replace the map sensor. We had to order one. We didn't have one close by. And I'll show you the results of that in a minute. But so here's some basics when you're dealing with OBD2. The first thing is that a bad sensor won't always set a code. It, if you, especially in this case, you know, the car was running good, came in and got parked, and then it wouldn't start. Well, when the car cools off, a lot of times with electronics, when you go through a cold soak, that's the time they're going to fail. Sometimes they'll fail on the restart, but uh, of a lot of times, um, thermal extremes is what causes uh, electronics to fail. Um, OBD is pretty good, but a lot of times it doesn't run tests continuously on every part, on every sensor. Sometimes it, it has to run them every drive cycle, every good drive cycle. Uh, there's some de technical definitions around what a good drive cycle is. In this case, the car got parked, we couldn't get it started, OBD didn't pick it up as a fault, we had to go look with a scan tool. Also, because you only get, in some cases, one test uh, per drive time, a, an intermittent sensor, you know, it may not get caught. Um, you could have one dropping in and out, and it might still look good. So. You know, with a lot of the tests that the OBD2 does, you need to have a good running engine, at least at some point, uh, so that it's got some ability to diagnose. I mean, if a pressure sensor dies, what do you measure it against? How do you, if it's, um, if it doesn't die completely, how do you know, right? 
The thing that we were relying on in this case is that many of the sensors, not all of them, but m many of the sensors have a backup, a default, a limp home mode. I have to tell you, from working in the industry as long as I did, we have some really, really smart people writing software for engines. And they always try to anticipate, it's not, they're not perfect, um, but they always try to anticipate what happens if a sensor fails. And so how could you mm, deduce and estimate a replacement value for a bad sensor? And typically, MAP sensors they can do that with, um, mass airflow MAF sensors, uh, you can do that with. Sometimes you can do it with temp sensors. But one of the things you can try is unplug the sensor if you think you got a bad one, and that's what we did. We could see in the scan tool that it wasn't responding, so we unplugged it and let the computer generate a, a backup value and stop relying on that sensor to fine-tune the engine. And lo and behold, things ran. So these are the sensors when, when we got the new one. Uh, the one up here on the top, this is the original factory GM sensor uh, from 2005. Uh, the one on the bottom is a Delphi uh, part number, Delphi provided, uh, purchased uh, to replace. And hmm, it, was only, it was only about a 10 minute uh, job to change it, it just snaps in. Here it is with the new sensor install. Starts right up. So that's one means of attacking an engine that won't run and, and going through the OBD and working through it. And uh, sometimes the problems that look the toughest aren't that hard when you you know dissect them and, and get down to the to the basics of what you got. It's, um, this, this was really good. I was prepared to go in a whole lot deeper. So there's a lesson there. And if you have a map sensor that goes bad, try unplugging it and see if you can make your engine run. Hey, one more thing as I'm wrapping this up. Uh, never really talked about what's a map sensor. Um, that stands for manifold absolute pressure, and it's measuring the air pressure inside your intake manifold. And so why did that make the engine run so rich in the first place, right? Why wouldn't it run? Well, manifold pressure goes up when the throttle is open. It thinks high pressure is like wide open throttle. And so all of the time, even though the uh, mass airflow sensor wasn't showing a lot of airflow, it kept thinking that the engine was wide open and it was feeding it extra fuel to try to accommodate that. So I hope that helps, and that's all for now.